Welcome to this video about how to calculate the positive and negative likelihood ratios. The likelihood ratio is a measure used in clinical diagnostics. To understand the likelihood ratio, we'll first briefly discuss the sensitivity and specificity. We'll continue with the same fictive data set that we used to estimate the sensitivity and specificity in the previous lecture. In this example, we have data on the prostate-specific antigen levels also called PSA levels, for 7 patients with prostate cancer and 7 individuals which do not have prostate cancer. These individuals are here defined as being healthy. To see how well the PSA concentration in the blood can discriminate between the prostate cancer patients and the healthy controls, we here set an arbitrary cutoff value of 2.3. Watch the lecture about the RSE curves for how to find an optimal cutoff value. All individuals above this cutoff line are predicted to have prostate cancer, whereas all individuals below this line are predicted to be healthy. Sensitivity tells how often a test turns positive for people who have the disease. Since we know that these seven individuals have prostate cancer, and that only five of these get a positive test result, the sensitivity is 5 over 7, or 71%. The sensitivity is therefore calculated as the number of two positives, divided by the total number that actually have the disease, which is the sum of the two positives and the false negatives. Specificity tells how often a test turns negative for people who do not have the disease. Since six out of the seven healthy controls are below the cutoff line, the specificity is six over seven, or about 86%. The specificity is therefore calculated as the number of two negatives, divided by the total number that actually are healthy, which is the sum of the two negatives and false positives. We'll now discuss the meaning of the positive and negative likelihood ratio. The positive likelihood ratio is defined as how much more likely it is to observe a positive test result among people who have the disease, compared to people who do not have the disease. From our previous example, we know that the proportion of patients with prostate cancer will get a positive test result is 71%. We also know that the proportion of healthy individuals with a positive test result is 1 over 7, or about 14%, since 1 out of 7 healthy individuals has a PSA level that is greater than 2.3. This proportion can be calculated as 1 minus the specificity. The positive likelihood ratio is equal to the probability for a positive test result for a person with prostate cancer, which is equivalent to the sensitivity, divided by the probability for a positive test result for a healthy person, which is equivalent to 1 minus the specificity. If you plug in the values for the sensitivity and 1 minus the specificity and do the math, we see that the positive likelihood ratio is 5. This means that the probability of observing a positive test result for a person who has prostate cancer is 5 times bigger compared to the probability of observing a positive test result for a healthy person. In other words, a positive test result is 5 times more likely to be observed for patients with prostate cancer compared to individuals who do not have prostate cancer. A good test should have as high positive likely ratio value as possible because a larger fraction of individuals with the disease should get a positive test compared to people with no disease. The negative likelihood ratio is defined as how much more likely it is to observe a negative test result among people who have the disease compared to people who do not have the disease. From our previous example, we know that the proportion of patients with prostate cancer will get a negative test is 2 over 7, or about 29%, since 2 out of the 7 patients get a negative result. This proportion can also be calculated as 1 minus the sensitivity. We also know that the proportion of healthy individuals with a negative test result is 6 over 7, or about 86%, since 6 out of the 7 healthy individuals have a PSA level that is less than 2.3. This proportion corresponds to the specificity. 
The negative likely ratio is the probability that the person with the disease gets a negative test result, divided by the probability that a healthy person gets a negative test result. If we plug in the values for 1 minus the sensitivity and the specificity and do the math, we see that the negative likely ratio value is about 0 0.34. A good test should have as low negative likely ratio value as possible because a larger fraction of healthy individuals should get a negative test compared to people with the disease. To interpret this value, it is easier if we first take the reciprocal of 0 0.34, which is approximately equal to 3. This value can be interpreted as the probability that a person with prostate cancer gets a negative result is three times lower than the probability that a healthy person gets a negative result. In other words, it is three times more likely that a healthy person gets a negative test result compared to a patient with prostate cancer. Finally, let's see what happens with the likelihood ratios if we add the following data point, which is a false negative case since it is a prostate cancer patient that has got a negative test result. With this new data point, the sensitivity is reduced to 62.5%. Since the new data point comes from a person with a disease, the specificity does not change. Since the sensitivity is reduced, the positive likely ratio is reduced from 5 to about 4.4, whereas the negative likely ratio is increased from 0 0.34 to about 0 0.44. This was the end of this video about how to calculate the positive and negative likelihood ratio values. Thanks for watching.